next speaker is Mark Berkowitz, who is from SQL Stream Incorporated. It is, uh, he's going to be talking about infrastructure for the streaming data problem. Lots of us machine learners who are working on streaming problems could make use of some infrastructure, I think. Uh, seems like a pretty cool product. Uh, his background he is he got a P, uh, uh, his bachelor's in physics from UC Berkeley, um, and he worked in the financial industry for a while. And uh, without further ado, please tell us about SQL Stream. Thank you, and, and thanks for inviting me to this conference. So um, I'm a, an engineer at SQL Stream, the company, which makes SQL Stream the product, which is a, a, a platform for streaming analytics. Um, but I'm going to be talking about a particular application of this, a particular in, in, to, in seismology, um, specifically a, a, a joint project that we, that we did with a, with a, with a consortium of, of universities, um, specifically CSD. So I'll briefly give, a, give the background and, and sketch out the problem. And then I'll, I'll spend about half the time talking about SQL Stream, explaining what it is and what it does. And, and then I can go more a little bit into the details of, of the solution. So I'm kind of a, an outlier here today, because I'm, I'm not talking about machine learning at all. I'm talking about um, infrastructure, a specific programming platform for, for doing computations on streams on a, on a single client service system or in the cloud. So the back, background is there's a, a big science. There's a, a large consortium called the, the OOI, um, Ocean Observatories thing, uh, NSF founded, um, involving various uh, institutions, academic institutions in the country. And the idea is to provide a kind of a enormous um, cloud workspace for, for, share, for um, fostering research and publicizing the results of research. And a little piece of this is called the OOICI, which stands for Cyber Infrastructure. And it's, it's basically a private cloud um, that's being built up so that experimenters can share data and share networks of sensors and um, provide a, a, an application computing platform for doing stream computing. So here's, here's their slide, and it's much better than anything I can draw. And you can, you can see from the, the logos at the bottom that uh, this is well sponsored, it's a lot of institutions involved, and it's very large scale. So a lot of work's going, it's a long-term project, and, so, and this infrastructure is being built up. Well, we got involved doing an application to plug into this about a year and a half ago. So at, at, at that stage, it was, there weren't many tools to make this a, an easy thing to build an application on. Uh, there are the usual uh, open source components are, are available. Um, there's great use of AMQP, which is an open source message bus with a Java bias. Um, and a lot, of a lot of the experiments are done by just <clears throat> experimenters writing their own Python code. Well, where we're coming from in our company is we're, we're trying to provide a kind of a, a middleware platform where it's easier to develop streaming applications. Now, our, our focus is really on the commercial world, uh, and our, our particular take on this is that uh, SQL, SQL, the database language, is, is familiar to commercial applications, and they would be in the situation that they would have some kind of batch-oriented database application, and they just couldn't cope with the, the new world of streaming data. So this would be a, an, an easy transition for them. Nevertheless, we, we met people from, some scientists from, who were working on a, on a, a, a project here, <coughs> So I'm looking at our platform more abstractly, that we have, we have a, um, a higher level language, some of our abstract, for, for describing the computation. And uh, as an experiment, we, we, we were just um, asked to help build a, a little piece of this. I think what was happening was that there was an existing system using proprietary software, and they were, they were trying to, uh, to detect earthquakes. And they wanted to adapt this to fit into this generic infrastructure. And so we proposed that we, we could help do it. So now quickly into the background of the, of, of the application. Um, 
The general point is, is to detect meaningful events in, in seismographic signals. And in the, eventually, there'll be a large um, worldwide um, system of sensor grids of all different kinds, mostly on the ocean floor. But at the time that we built this, this prototype, um, what was available is, is this, this array of ground sensors. So I, I don't know if this is accurate or just suggestive, but there's a regular grid of ground stations which have uh, seismographs. And each of these produces, it has at least one sensor that produces uh, at least three um, signals of, of vibration in the ground. So the idea is that you get signals. So, that, so each, each horizontal, horizontal strip is one time series signal from one channel from one sensor. It's the blue line. And the point is to, is to find a, a burst that's meaningful, that's a candidate for being due to an earthquake and not just noise, and to, to bracket off the interesting part. Um, so, that's, so the first stage is just to d detect meaningful events in, the, in this sense. So this is sort of pattern recognition. But there was a prescribed algorithm, which is based on, on the physics of the situation. And our challenge was to, to do that. Uh, so actually, what's, so the idea here is that these are related. This is sample data. This is a meaningful thing. And you can tell that it's, uh, it's detected. Um, the trick is to find the onset is not the, the middle of it. It's, it's the, uh, the red dot and with the vertical line. And then there's a, a cutoff point, which is the second vertical line. And all the, the, the little yellow dots are, are false end transitions that the algorithm has eliminated. Um, so the first stage is given many, many channels of, of data like this to find significant events. Second stage would, would correlate the channels based on the geographic positions of the sensors. And it would, it would be trying to make sense out of, them, out of the transmission of, of sound waves in, in the Earth. So this next slide is, is the algorithm. Uh, this isn't my slide. The, I, I'm not a seismologist, so I, I don't know what A and F means. And I, I don't know if this is a standard algorithm or, or, or if this is something cooked up ad hoc. But you can see that it's very complicated and that it's not really signal processing. It starts off as, as signal processing, but it's been simplified and it's got some arbitrary parts to it. So it's basically an. Um, it's your heuristic. I'm assuming that this wasn't discovered from the data, but that it's based on uh, rules of thumb and the earth science. So if you, if you look at this, um, it's very confusing. Um, the, the very wiggly green line represents one channel of, of filtered data. And the invisible the light blue line and the darker red line are uh, sliding averages of this. The lines, the purple line ratio one and ratio two, I, I think are, av are ratios of these averages, but not point by point. One of them is clamped to a, a value in the recent past or across one of these thresholds. There's thresholds up and down so that you don't get a bang bang, uh, to, to, so, so that you don't get false negatives. You have to cross the higher threshold to get an on event. So some complicated number. I don't even think it's ratio 2. Yet another derived time series um, has to cross these thresholds to find areas of interest. And then, uh, then just to make it more um, ad hoc, there, there are certain extra rules about the length of an interval, which um, are to, to get rid of outliers. And, and for example, if the, the interval can't last, if the interval's too short, it's not possible that it's an earthquake. If the interval's too long, it means we, we had to drop out of this some data. So the, we, we were uh, asked to try and implement this algorithm with our platform. In other words, we were, we were asked to, to encode this in our application language, which is pretty standard SQL. It's SQL in the streaming context. So it's, it was pretty strange. So what is SQL stream? So I'll, I'll, I'll briefly explain what it's for and, and how it works. It's a platform for streaming analytics that is doing uh, real-time computations on, on real-time data streams. So the, the peculiar property, it's, it's defining adjective, is that it's based on SQL. But it's SQL in the streaming context. 
And, and like all streaming systems, it's, it's import, important to provide results continuously as quick, and, and compute things as quickly as possible. The other, other characteristic is that we've tried to make it uh, a scalable distributed platform. Um, in, in, in fact, uh, the, while the current version is a client service system, the, the, the next forthcoming version is uh, a cloud version in, in which um, there's a central control node, but computation happens on, on several nodes with um, automatic routing of data for part um, and uh, redundancy and fallback, kind of, kind of the way most uh, distributed systems do things. So if you were to look under the hood, you, 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 if you were to approach, you'd say this looks like a database, but it doesn't act like a database. And if you lift the hood, you'd see that part of it is a database, that we've got a query engine and a, and a metadata catalog the way that a database does, and our, our language is SQL. So like a database, we, we, we take a declarative approach. We have a persistent store of metadata describing things. And, but the difference is that with a, a, a standard database, the goal is to answer a question. So you can, you, and usually you're running against static data, of, of, whether it's a small amount or it's a, it's, it's a huge amount, you're computing a simple result. So the diff it was interesting hearing about um, fish this morning. The difference with, with that is that where that seems to be a, a, a tool for a programmer to generate a, a distributed streaming system from, the, from a, a small piece of code, an, an algorithm, our, ours is more like a programming environment that, that runs on a server exists and one does applications against it. It's designed for performance. It appears uh, to, to be a database that, it, it, J, that is, it, it talks JDBC and SQL to clients. And it's also been designed for extensibility. It's based on a very flexible query engine. So it's possible to integrate it with, with um, external systems and to put in plugins to run code that's not, not SQL and not even Java. So conceptually, what, what we've done is apply database technology to a stream. Um, so the difference with, with other systems is that a stream for us is not simply a, a sequence of messages. It's a sequence of time-stamped, strongly typed rows. And we've, um, we have, when we evaluate things in a, in a streaming, an expression in a, on a stream, we get a, we get a streaming result. And we've tried to, to stick very closely to standard SQL. It turns out that there are a few constructs which have a natural streaming interpretation. But when something is, and so we, we do the usual things uh, of, of computing scale of functions, database operations, and we, we also um, can compute analytic functions on sliding windows. So what, actually what would happen is that um, if you designed a system as a series of SQL queries, which become, they're compiled to be query plans, but the plans are turned into a data flow graph. So actually, we're using SQL as a way of constructing, declaratively defining and constructing a data flow graph such as this one. So th this is, is meant to show, um, here we have uh, two inputs and three, three outputs. And the green blobs are named streams. So that's something like a topic in a message passing system, but it's more strongly typed. It's a, it, a, it's a stream is an infinite series of rows of, of a particular type. And the, the cool thing is, is that um, it's, it, this graph is dynamic. It's possible to, for this to run a very long time and to add and subtract new queries from it. So you might, you might have a, a long running system that defines S1 as some s signal of interest. And, it's, and then you might later add a, a secondary query to, to ask about some other calculation in S2. So it's, um, the, the little gr gray boxes are doing calculations. And the green streams are merging their inputs and, and, and multiplexing their outputs. So it's, it's been designed for speed. Uh, the, dis, the distributed architecture that's coming out soon is designed to scale. So here, the graph is distributed over several nodes, uh, which, which communicate over our own binary data protocol. And th this is designed to both for redundancy and for partitioning the data set. You automatically split up the data based on, on a key value of some field. 
So now I'll talk about um, briefly about the specific application, which was to, which was to encode this rather uh, strange algorithm in SQL and to integrate into this existing infrastructure. So as I, as I mentioned, the, the infrastructure is based on AMQP. We were replacing a, a, a small handwritten Python program to, to do this calculation. So the first question is, is how to deal with signal processing data as, as type streams. So basically, we, we've got a time series of a vector x of t, various quantities. And I represent that as a, as a stream of rows, which are with each of which has um, the components of x, uh, which are in different dimensions, um, as fields, plus the actual time as a timestamp. And we merge all, these, all the um, channels into one stream, which I call a, 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 a wide stream, because it could be a virtual stream. We can subdivide it later automatically in distributed processing. Um, and the, the, the trick in doing this in SQL is that you don't have local variables. So as you calculate things, you just um, compute additional columns. You have more and more columns. And then, then finally, um, you do a projection at the end to give the results. So let, let me just show um, this. The, so this is an overview of the, of the data flow. And um, it's straight through. It's one pipeline. A uh, mes uh, uh, message packets uh, uh, come off the bus. They are decoded to be actual vector blocks of sample data on one channel. They're filtered. Then various computations are applied. All of which, some of which are are straightforward um, applications of the of existing SQL operators like average, and some of which required some extension. But we have the facility to to. Uh, to add operators and transformations written in Java, written in SQL, written in C++. So I, I did, I've identified the elements that weren't well supported in SQL, and I made um, prototype impl implementations of those. And we, we might find that, that if these are important oper analytic operations on, on streams of this type, that we, we would incorporate them as, as built-in things. Then finally, you, you get to the, 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 the complicated calculation. You've, You've computed all those averages. You've detected all the transitions. You've matched up matching up transitions and down transitions. You've, you've rejected the, the pairs that, that are the wrong size or violate some of the other conditions. You finally have detections. And then when we have the detections, we just, we just put out a, a, a simple message. Actually, what we did is <clears throat> the requirement was to match an existing system that simply output a little text record when it found something. But that doesn't, you can't really tell if that's right or wrong. It was more dramatic to add where I have that, the second blue blob there, detectors. That's another stream. And because it's a stream, after running this pipeline, I could hook in another query to pull off that, a query that could compute the, the um, throughput of the system, or a query that could graph the results. In fact, the, the graphs that I showed earlier are actually the graphs of our system uh, pr producing the, c the correct result. And they were made by having a streaming query and um, having it write a table and using um, something like MATLAB or Octave to graph it. So I could go into more detail about how, how this works. The gist of it is that as you go down the pipeline, this, this shows the, the row type as it, as it increases. Oh, sorry, I've skipped one. So as the data is acquired in process, each horizontal line represents one row of data, which is one sample. And it not only does it have a timestamp and certain and input values, as it goes down the pipeline, the computed values become more and more columns. That, that's a workaround for the, 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 the defects in SQL as a, an application programming language that it doesn't have local variables. But by doing everything in SQL, we're actually doing it very efficiently. Because I, I should emphasize that although we speak SQL, and although we use database technology, and that we have a, a, query, a query planner and execution, our execution is, is completely unlike a database. It's the opposite. We're avoiding disk. We're dealing with um, incremental computation of data on the fly. We try to do computation in local memory. And when we're distributed, we're, we're, we're um, using our, our, our own uh, uh, SDP protocol to, to stream data as quickly as possible from, from 
from node to node or between clients and, and nodes. So once, once a query is set up, you're not even talking to the control node. You have a direct pipeline to data. It's basically a rapid computation of large throughput data streams, tr also trying to minimize latency. And um, when, you're, so when you are reading a result set, the results from a query, essentially results are being pushed at you. So in, in conclusion, well, I, I, I mentioned the, the scaling up. Um, I, I personally wrote this, the SQL code I haven't bothered to show you to work on, a, on a, an initial prototype of just 10 channels. But the same code was used in a demo prototype of, I think, 1,000 channels that, that could scale up to 14,000. And this required no change in the code because of, the, of this idea of, of natural. Well, the problem is intrinsically parallel. In, in that all the, the channels could be computed in parallel. So by putting, making one large stream in which one of the, the tabs is the channel ID, the, the problem can be split up and distributed over various nodes and then recombined. And our, our forthcoming distributed system um, it does that intrinsically. But for purposes of this prototype, a year ago, uh, we were able to run um, kind of a, a, a federation system using a, a simple cloud resource manager which on demand um, provisioned and started, um, I think, about a dozen of our servers and divvied up the inputs and, and collected the outputs back again. And so the reason we're able to do that is, well, of course, partially because each individual node is, a, is efficient enough uh, because the, the processing is this compiled data graph. And the other reason is that, it's, is that it was very easy for us to hook into the, <coughs> to deal with the, the resource manager and to deal with the, the message bus um, because we, we, we are flexible enough to have adapters. So to conclude, um, I, I, I hope I've shown that our, our platform is extensible and interesting. Um, it's a commercial product, but we're very interested in unusual applications and in research applications. Uh, since that's the way we can, we can keep up with the way the, the world's changing because of the availability of all streaming data. And so we, we're very interested in, in working with, with um, academic and other, other research, researchers. And um, a, re a research license would be available prob probably by, by arrangement at an, at, for nothing or for free or for a nominal charge. So if, if anyone's interested, please um, speak to me or email me at sequelstream.com. And that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. So along those lines, I, uh, I have a question. Yep. Can you uh, give us a broad picture of who your customers might be? Who are you targeting? Um, you know, how, does, how does your infrastructure scale? And so what problems would this be best suited for? What problem would this be? Well, I, I, in terms, well, in scaling, we are working on dealing with, oh, we can easily deal with uh, 30 or 40,000 rows a second. We're trying to go higher to 100,000 rows a second. Now, I, I, what, is, what is a row? Typically, a row, a row is a um, fixed size message of from 40 to 100, maybe, maybe half, half a K. Um, the, the big, the, it has to be strongly typed data for the relational approach to, to pay off. Um, and the, in the history of the company is, is that we are, well, we're not experts in machine learning. So we are, are looking for customers, we're looking for applications that would benefit from timely results or, and have, and have um, a, a large amount of real-time data, but we are, helping them in, encode their application in, in SQL and trying to stretch SQL to, to encompass their applications. Um, I, I'm also very interested in, in applying some of, of the standard and new algorithms in machine learning, especially the machine learning on streams that I've, I've been hearing about today. Um, because it, with, with some of our, our applications, like uh, w one thing that we're doing is, is monitoring and predicting uh, road traffic um, in, in, in large metropolitan areas. 
And here, there's, you know, because of the prevalence of GPS and, and, and um, sensors on roads, there's, there's more and more data available all the time. But um, we've been kind of ad hoc in how we were going to interpret this um, to, to produce interesting results. So we, we, um, I, I think that there's, there's a, a very fruit, fruitful juncture between um, the commercial world that maybe is jumping from um, database technology to streaming technology and, and the, these interesting um, offshoots of artificial intelligence. But you asked, you asked me about clients. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have uh, time for one or maybe two more questions in the audience. Um, so, so you mentioned that um, this works with a, a network of sensors. Um, you you had the, the image of the US with a bunch of points on it, um, different sizes of sensors. And um, are, are all those, are all the readings for those sensors contained within one row during, during operation? Or, or is it one sensor, is it one data stream, data flow? Well, you somehow combine them? Right. The, I, I guess I, I, I rushed over that. Um, each, each data point, each is a row. Or, or um, it, by data point, I mean a timestamp, a, a, a channel identification, and, and various um, attributes of data. Uh, th th these are probably each 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 x, y, and z signal is a, is a separate time series. So basically, a, a, a time series is a triple, uh, a, a label, a channel label, a, a time t, and a value. So that would be one row, because the the row the row is the it, it, it's simplest to, to do scalable computations on a single row and to do comparisons and aggregations on a window of adjacent rows. Then, you know, once you've processed that single sensors, um, you know, collection of three readings, um, how are those combined together? Or are you, is That's that a, yeah, that was, that was a separate phase, and I, I was kind of a, uh, uh, perplexed that they asked us to do this, probably to, to, to make us go away. Re the scalar computation rather than do that. The, 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 there's, a, there's a second uh, phase um, in the prototype application that, that finds, that compares neighboring sites in, 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 in a, you know, ge geographic, geographically neighboring sites. But I think the, the emphasis of the overall OOI was to combine lots of different grids which have very heterogeneous data, data types, sensor types and to, to, to standardize the, the data formats and to, to provide a platform for for, com for computing. Okay. Oh, there's, a, I think, a question in the back. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, it's not in memory database, right? Is it? It's in memory, but it's not a database. It's, it's, it's similar, but the focus isn't on, on um, storing a large result in memory. It, it's, it's, on, it's on dispatching the rows very quickly. It sort of approaches that if you have very large um, windows. If you need to, if you need to um, do exact computations over the past um, day or month, you'd be storing a lot of results. And that's kind of like a, temp a, 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 day, a temporary a table in an in in-memory database. But we don't, we don't uh, the, the focus on, in terms of features and optimization, is, 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 not, is, is just sort of pushing the data off the node as fast as possible. I think this is very cool stuff. Um, we're about eight minutes behind the schedule, so sorry. which is pretty good. Uh, so um, please, uh, if you have any other questions, uh, take them offline. Oh, please. Let's thank the speaker. Thank you.